watch on mobile devices or the big screen, all for free. No subscription required. Download Beely now. My name is Tracy, and here I am opening the door to what will become a whole new world for me. At this moment, I think I'm like any other 29-year-old girl. I think I'm happy, successful, popular, and living life to the fullest. I had no idea what I was missing out on. I did not realize what real happiness was, and I had no idea how much easier life could be. When a friend of mine suggested I talk with the owner of Zen Fitness about being part of a project, I thought, what do I have to lose? I had no idea what I was going to be able to gain. Clothes shopping as a 12-year-old girl that weighs close to 200 pounds is not easy. Stylish, age-appropriate clothing is not available in your size and you're forced to shop in the adult women's section. Clothes are frumpy and do nothing to boost your self-esteem as a young girl. I remember being made fun of because of the clothes I wore. In one particular instance, I had a crush on a boy. He saw the large bra strap through the back of my shirt and said it was an old lady bra. It absolutely broke my heart. I can vividly remember when I was young and had my feelings hurt because of my weight. Arguing with school friends on the playground and hearing them say, what are you gonna do, sit on me? I remember feeling embarrassed being laughed on the track during presidential fitness days. I remember never being able to play on the teeter-totter because I was bigger than the other kids. I remember not being able to live and play like the other kids. I also remember teaching myself at a really young age to not care what other people thought or said about me. I turned off my emotions and did not let my feelings get hurt any longer. Looking back at it, it would have been easier to learn how to run than to learn how to bury my emotions and feelings for so long. I, like many other people, make daily adaptations to their life in order to accommodate being obese. From early on in my youth, I put up an emotional, protective barrier against all of the negative and mean-spirited comments that were said about my weight. I honestly think I have gotten to the point where I just do not care what other people have to say. I avoid embarrassing situations and try to live day to day. I pretend that I am happy with life until I actually believe that I am. Um, I've known Tracy for a really long time and um, I've been worried about her um, and her health and I'm really excited about this opportunity um, for her to get healthy. Uh, I know it's going to be a challenge and a whole new lifestyle change, but it's something that um, I think needs to be done and I just wish the best for her and I hope that she will succeed in this because I do worry about her. Hi, I'm Carly Asse. My interest in health started at an early age. My grandfather died of cancer and my grandmother and aunt both died of heart disease. All three were untimely deaths. My mother always stressed the importance of how eating healthy made me feel good and eating unhealthy made me feel bad. So I became aware at an early age how food affects the way you feel and the quality of your life. I was a hard worker in school and took an avid interest in sports. I graduated valedictorian of my high school in 1996 and received a college scholarship to play tennis. While majoring in business, 
I continued my own personal studies in nutrition and exercise. Things were going well, or so it seemed. When I was 22 years old and a senior in college, my life took an unexpected turn. I was convicted for selling ecstasy and sentenced to seven years and three months in federal prison. My world was turned upside down. I was scared, lost, unsure of my future. One time when I met with Carly's fifth grade teacher, um, she said, Marilyn, what can I say? He is the child everyone wishes was theirs. Carly was a golden haired boy. He worked hard in school. He had a lot of friends. Everyone liked him. He was charismatic. He um, was one of the top players on all the teams in school. He actually won the National Junior Olympics. Uh, came in second place, just lost by a stride. And um, he played tennis and he was even bound to of his class from high school. So when he was arrested, his dad and I were just stunned, shocked. We had no idea. And it was facing a world that was so frightening and scary that I didn't know anything about. And we just feared for his life and what was going to happen to him. We didn't know. We just didn't know. I've known Carly since high school, and um, it, it was, you know, really in college that we became really good friends. Uh, we worked out together, um, we hung out a lot, we had a group of friends, and it was really a normal college situation. We played ping pong all the time, um, Carly made great grades, and uh, we really lived sort of a regular college friend group lifestyle. So when they got in trouble, uh, I was worried about Carly, uh, he, he didn't seem like the type of person that would ever go to prison. And I knew that when he got in trouble that he was a good kid that had just gotten into a bad situation. Um, but I was worried about him. So, you know, seven years in prison is a long time that he had to face. And uh, I just remember going into it, being really worried about him. After Carly was arrested and it was on the front page of uh, the Gainesville Sun, I was having trouble going around town because people wouldn't ask me about Carly or they'd act like he had died. And I cut out this picture of him and, and safety pin in my shirt I wore for two years because I wanted everyone to know this is my son. I'm wearing it right here over my heart. I love him unconditionally. He might have made a mistake, but he is my son. And he's worthy of being asked about and thought of and loved. Prison was definitely a world that I never expected to be in. I was entering a world of stabbings, beatings, gangs, and violence. But it was a world that I had entered because of my own doing. It was gonna be the most daunting challenge I was ever gonna face. And I had to prepare myself if I was gonna make it out alive. My deepest, darkest moment came in my first year when I was put into solitary confinement. Solitary confinement is when you are locked in a small cell with a bed, sink, in a toilet for 24 hours a day. You're by yourself with no one to talk to or share your feelings. I miss my friends and family so much it hurt. I was alone in a small concrete steel prison and all I could think about was, how am I going to do these seven years? Time went by so slowly. I was so stressed out and felt such anxiety and only one thing made me feel better, exercise. I had to be creative because I had no equipment. Exercise gave me hope. Hope got me through some tough times. Hope is powerful. We went to visit Carly every chance we had. We would sometimes drive 13 or 15 hours to spend a day with him. And um, he would come out in that orange prison suit and I would always think he didn't really belong there. As I felt more positive, I made a plan to do things in prison that I never had time to do before. I left solitary confinement after six months and began my studies. I spent my days learning new things and exercising. I quickly learned Spanish and guitar after the first year and went on to learn four more languages. History, I read the classics, I studied business yoga, and my favorite, nutrition. I was intrigued by what a profound effect nutrition had on the human body. 
I tried many different ways of eating, and one diet was without a doubt the best for health, performance, and overall well-being, the plant-based diet. My body fat dropped rapidly to under 7%, I performed better in sports and workouts, I slept better, and I had more energy. Other inmates came to me for help, and I watched as they quickly became healthy following my nutrition and exercise programs. That is when I realized I loved being a personal trainer and wanted to pursue a career in training when I got out. I finally finished my sentence and I was so excited to finally get out of prison. While prison was a tremendous learning and growing experience for me, I was really eager to get out and see my family and do things that I hadn't done in a while. How many people when they get out of prison have a whole huge party waiting for them? And we drove up and there was a sign my friends had put together at our house saying, Welcome home, Carly. And it was a wonderful time. We were so glad to have him back. We bought him new clothes. We helped put together a resume. And what concerned me was that I was, I was seeing that he was being turned down from jobs because he was a felon. And I thought, oh my gosh, is this going to affect his whole life? Is he ever going to be able to be more than a dishwasher because he has so much to give and so much to share that he learned during this experience. I wanted to pursue a job as a personal trainer, but I quickly discovered that no one wants to hire a felon. I kept trying and looking and trying and looking, but eventually all I could find was a job as a dishwasher, so I had to settle for that. I didn't give up hope though, and I kept my pursuit and my dream of being a personal trainer. During the time that Carly was in prison, he um, learned how to become a personal trainer, and I had started a personal training studio. So naturally, when he got out, he came to me and wanted uh, me to hire him, and there was a little controversy about whether or not to do that from some of my coworkers, but I did it, and it turned out to be a great decision. Uh, Carly was a top-selling personal trainer, the top-selling personal trainer for me from the, the rest of the time I owned that business. He put people on a plant-based diet, got the best results of anybody, and uh, it turned out to be the best decision uh, that I had, had made. I had such success that within three years, I was able to open my own personal training studio called Zen Fitness. Seeing the fast results and the lives I was helping to change made me want to share this knowledge on a larger scale. And that is when this film, Unsupersize Me, was born. My vision was to show how quickly and easily you can go from extremely poor health to optimal health in a very short period of time without surgery, diet pills, complicated fad diets, or starvation. The vegan diet was easy to do, and it worked fast. The following movie is a personal story for both myself and the new friend I made in the process, Tracy Ryan. Together, we set a goal to change the world. I hope you enjoy this movie and see how quickly and easy it is to become healthy starting right at your dinner plate. I envision all people, regardless of their current weight or fitness level, benefiting from a vegan diet and improving their health and ultimately their life. Because life is difficult to enjoy if you don't have your health. What are the um, what are the top three things you're looking forward to with your new new body and new life? Um, just being able to get rid of some of like the daily worries that have just become normal. Man, I could be accomplishing so much more if I wasn't worrying about that stuff. When I go over to my friend's house, if she lives on like the third story, I have to climb upstairs. And I've recently told my secret, but I always climb up the stairs and I'm like, man, stairs always make me have to pee. Like, I gotta go to the bathroom. But I'm just, I never have to go to the bathroom. I'm just going into the bathroom so that I can catch my breath and pant and gasp for air <laughs> while nobody else is there trying to talk to me. <laughs> so I just go to the bathroom to catch my breath and then I come out and I'm like, woo, good. <laughs> Thank God for that bathroom, you know. So, I, like, just little things like that. Like, Any big goals of things you want to do that you can't do now? Um, travel. My best friend lives in Oklahoma, and I would love to be able to see her more often. Um, we were college roommates, um, best friends from there. Just, I feel really bad not being able to fly out to visit her, because I think that she's on the verge of getting engaged too, but she hasn't, you know, I haven't spent a lot of time with her boyfriend because I can't travel out there. So, it always seems like she travels to visit me, I never travel out there. Right now, if I go and do something social, 
it's either, hey guys, let's do something social, I'll cook dinner for everybody, or let's go to a bar and get tanked. <laughs> I'd love to say, hey guys, let's all get together and go kayaking, or do something else. Like, I, I would never even consider anything like that, or something active. Like, I remember years ago I went tubing. Tubing is a disaster. <laughs> They don't make the tubes big enough, I tip out of the tube, I can't get through the tube, the tube gets stuck around my neck and I can't get, it's a disaster, <laughs> like embarrassing. It was me going down the river with my arm over the tube. That's how tubing ended for me. <laughs> like... Dating in general at 345 pounds is very difficult. You have to think ahead on a lot of other things that you can take for granted when you are of a healthier weight. When you're heavy, you have to think about the car that your date is picking you up in. Smaller cars have smaller seat belts, and the seat belt will not be big enough for you. You sometimes have to offer to drive your date so that the seat belt does fit. You have to find out what restaurant you're going to and know which restaurants in town have large booth sizes. If there's small booth sizes, you have to call ahead to ask the hostess to seat you at a table to avoid an awkward situation of trying to fit into a booth instead of a table. Or you have to just opt to sit at the bar. Going to the movies is very difficult. Movie theater seats are very small, especially if the armrest doesn't move. So you basically can never go to the movie theater without being really uncomfortable. None of this stuff you really have to think of at all when you are of a healthier weight. I learned a lot watching Tracy on her date. I never realized the hardships an overweight person has to deal with that most of us never even think about. It makes me even more determined in helping her succeed in changing her life. Yeah, it was all just really embarrassing, I'm sorry. Um, but it was really nice meeting you. Hey, it was great to meet you, thanks nice. again. Thank you, have a good evening. You too. Okay, bye. -bye. bye. Here are the rules. Tracy can eat as many and as much plant-based foods as she wants. No meat, no dairy, no eggs, no products that come from animals. Plant-based foods she eats as much as she wants for one year combined with an hour of weight training and cardiovascular exercise every day. We are not doing the Biggest Loser workout regimen. While The Biggest Loser is a great show and motivating to many people, working out six to eight hours a day is not feasible for most. Oh, and one other rule, no diet drugs and no surgery. I have no idea what Tracy will be able to do. I'm just hoping she can get the green light from the doctor to start our project. She is obese and unhealthy, so I know she is at a high risk for cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. Going into Dr. Caputo's office is an emotional roller coaster. Having been heavy my whole life, I have learned to bury my fears and worries about my bad health. It is more embarrassing to be weighing in at 345 pounds than mentally scary. I am more ashamed about being grossly overweight than I am worried about having a heart attack. I have been told for years that my weight is going to have a negative effect on my health, but I choose to ignore it. I bury those thoughts just like my hurt feelings when I was being made fun of on the playground. I know that the doctor will lecture me about my weight, they have since I was young, but I always just ignored it. I could have had a heart attack or worse at any moment, but I choose not to think about it or care. I should have seen this as a major challenge to my body. I suppose if I really care about my health, I would have done something sooner, which raises the question, why don't people care? What do you think the vegan diet's gonna do for her? Uh, wow, that's gonna be amazing. I don't know what your diet is now, but... Um, what would be uh, your prediction? I would guess significant weight loss. Uh, you still get your protein, uh, you're gonna do well. This stress test measured how long it would take Tracy's heart rate to reach 167 beats a minute while the speed and incline increase. Tracy lasted six minutes and 19 seconds. The first person I spoke to is Dr. Neil D. Barnard, a leader in nutrition and research. 
His research has been cited by the American Diabetes Association and the American Dietetic Association in official policy statements on healthful diets. Can you tell me about the most significant case study you've done on the health benefits of a plant-based diet versus tr the traditional American diet? We have been very impressed by populations that follow mostly plant-based diets. They tend to be thinner, so we decided to put it to the test in our research center. And the results are really very striking. That even though people aren't counting calories, they're basically just eating healthy food, the weight starts to come off and it comes off and it comes off. And all of the side effects are good ones. Their cholesterol comes down, their energy goes up. If they have diabetes, that gets better. It's remarkable to see. Can you discuss the myth that you don't get enough protein, uh, vitamin B12, on a vegan diet? In the course of our studies, we also track the nutrition that people have. Are they getting enough protein? Are they getting enough calcium and so forth? And we find that not only are they getting enough, their nutrition is actually better than it was before. They're getting adequate protein across the board with, as opposed to getting too much protein, which some people are getting before. They're getting adequate fat, adequate minerals and vitamins, but they're getting much more fiber, much more of the powerful antioxidants. Their vitamin intake is through the roof. All in all, they're doing dramatically better. Next up was Dr. T. Colin Campbell, Jacob Gould Sherman Professor Emeritus of Nutritional Biochemistry at Cornell University and also the author of The China Study. With more than 70 years of peer-reviewed research funding, he has authored over 300 research papers on diet, nutrition, and health, derived from laboratory-based experimental research and large-scale human studies in China and the Philippines. Your studies shown that we can turn cancerous growth off by eating a plant-based diet and on by eating a meat and dairy diet. You know, part of my early research in the early years was actually an investigation of the effect of animal protein on the development of cancer. It turns on cancer, it turns on cancer, it turns on cancer. And so we could turn on cancer by giving it an animal protein, basically the protein cow's milk. We could turn it off by just taking it away. Uh, then we tried some plant-based protein. Plant-based proteins did not turn it on. It never got turned on. So only animal-based protein was able to turn on the cancer cell. Wow, that's amazing. Vegan bodybuilder, motivational speaker, and author Robert Cheek grew up on a farm in Corvallis, Oregon, where he adopted a vegan lifestyle in 1995 at the age of 15. Today he's an Amazon.com best-selling author of the book, Vegan Bodybuilding and Fitness. As a two-time natural bodybuilding champion, Robert has been considered one of Veg News Magazine's most influential vegan athletes. As a vegan bodybuilder, did you ever have any problems putting on muscle? You know, like I said, I, I went from 120 to 195, and most of that was in a pretty brief period. So when I was running in college, 155, as soon as I stopped and hung up the shoes and put, and put on the weightlifting gloves, I shot up to 195 within a few years, I gained 30 pounds in one year. So really no no problem, no issue. I have that in my book, Vegan Bodybuilding and Fitness, from one year, 157 to 186, and then I was 195, I think, the next year. So no problem, just ate good food, trained hard, and, and had something that I was working toward. Tracy's first workout is going to be tough. She is uncomfortable being in a gym and very limited in what she can do. When she lays down on a bench or workout mat, she can't get up without assistance. I can identify with Tracy because I know from my prison experience what it's like to be in an environment you're not comfortable in and to take on a huge, seemingly impossible challenge. Okay, next we have our core strength test. We're just gonna test your abs, lower back, over there, plank, and see how long you can hold I don't know what a plank is. I'm gonna show you. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, right? All right. So we're just going to come down here, pull it up as long as you can. Okay. You made it look pretty easy. It's not too hard. <laughs> okay, ready? And shoot off. Okay, how's it feeling so far? Oh, it's not so easy. Obviously, I'm not versed in how to work out. I do not know the difference from a squat to a lunge to a sprint. 
they all just sound like exercise to me. While I am never afraid of hard work, I simply am not able to move like other people in the gym. I struggle to get on and off of equipment, stepping down from a treadmill is tough, getting up from a bench is like a turtle being stuck on their back, and getting up from a flat floor requires to be pushed up with the help of a bench. The trainers even have a hard time helping me up from the floor sometimes. It is embarrassing. What is surprising is that while the workouts are challenging and definitely leave me sore, it is worse noticing how different my body is from others in the gym. I did not realize I could not do a lunge or a squat like other people. I saw others doing it and just assumed I could do it as well. I could not. And this is one of the first times I realized how much my weight is inhibiting me from living my life. This might be why so many people choose not to continue with their workout programs. I wonder why so many people allow themselves to be prisoners of their own body. And this makes me think of the struggles Carly had gone through. He was imprisoned and unable to live life to the fullest, just like my fat locks me away now. How's this half mile, half mile feeling? Uh, it's good. My legs are definitely uh, tingling, for sure. What are we feeling in the upper body? Um, I'm definitely breathing hard. I'm sweating. I can tell I'm working something, so. Um, but I'm good. I mean, it's not a hurt hurt. Good hurt. Yeah, it's a good hurt. <laughs> That's what we like. All right, we're coming up on the end here. Half mile <laughs> test at 11:25. She um did really good today. We have got a long way to go. We're gonna climb a mountain. Um, her strength is decent though, which is good. Um, and the doctor gave her a clean bill of health, so we're gonna be able to really work hard in here. And she's a hard worker, so I think we're moving in the right direction. So, exactly what is a vegan whole foods diet? A vegan whole foods diet is avoiding any products that come from animals. We eat vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, grains, and legumes. Instead of meat, we eat things like tempeh and tofu. Instead of animal milk, we drink almond milk, soy milk, and rice milk. And we aren't just eating raw vegetables. With a vegan whole foods diet, we can make endless amounts of super tasty meals. And they're not only tasty, but fun to make too. Okay, Tracy, let's see what we have here that we shouldn't have. Okay. Wanna find out why someone is overweight? Go look in their fridge. Tracy is obese, and guess what her fridge is loaded with? Meat, dairy, and processed foods. The fridge never lies. I can tell within 10 seconds of looking in a person's fridge if they are healthy or not. We have big changes to make, but I can tell Tracy is excited to make them. What else? Like if I was to pick like the top five things that I should never pass up in this department. What should I not pass up? You can have whatever you want. Anything? Yes. Okay, I really like fennel. Okay. I like... Um, Get everything you like. Okay. I can tell that Tracy really likes the fact that she can eat as many fruits and veggies as she wants. I like leaves. I'm also showing her that there are endless varieties of tasty um, combinations to like choose from in the leaves. produce section. Okay. Our shopping is fun and fast. It's weird because I feel rushed because I think that I have all these aisles to walk up and down to. But if I really think about it, it's going to be here. And the yeah. 20 minutes I would spend in the meat department a looking few. at different kinds of meats and thinking about fat marbling. I guess I won't have to do that anymore. No. <laughs> a lot of good groceries. Healthy growth. Yeah. Look at all that. <laughs> Excited. <laughs> I'm noticing as I'm loading my groceries that I didn't use all of the bags. And I normally have to use all of my bags when I grocery shop because um, I have to keep the meat separate from everything else. But I didn't need to do that this time. And why do you have to keep the meat separate? Because it's uh, cross contamination. Tracy just realized how strange it is 
that she always has had to keep her meat separate from the rest of her groceries to avoid contamination. Most people accept without question that they have to cook meat until well done to not get sick. Want to avoid food pathogens? Then don't eat animal products. Food pathogens mostly come from animals. Produce that has food pathogens is contaminated by animals. And does anyone care that E. coli comes from cow poop? Yuck. Who wants to eat that? So, tell us about this, this tattoo thing you want to do. <laughs> um, somebody recommended to me that, um, you know, that uh, he, do, he wants to make sure that I don't forget how far I've come and what I've done and accomplishments and things like that. He's very concerned that I forget what I've accomplished already. So, he recommended that since I like tattoos for, like, big weight loss, he recommended like every 50 pounds that I lose to get a tattoo on my body that only I would know and see and that um, it would kind of remind me of how far I've come and what I've lost and things like that. I think that's a great idea. It'll be motivating for sure. So. Where we are here is three 28 after one week of being vegan and exercising now how much weight is that we started at 345 yes so Tracy's first weigh-in is crucial I know that she will become a believer if she sees good results and if she believes her life will be positively changed forever that is 15 17 pounds nice. in one week. Woohoo! Um, you could win Biggest Loser. You would beat everyone <laughs> in the ground. <laughs> so here we are at the end, 17 pounds down, end of your workout to conclude week one. Um, have you ever, I mean, you've obviously tried to lose weight plenty of times in your life. Have you ever lost 17 pounds in one week? No, not that much. <laughs> <laughs> Even on all the crazy fad diets? No, um, never that much, yeah, no. Well, that is awesome, and we are very proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Second from three, That's All righty. Kicked it up a notch, baby. There we go. Oh. I think people immediately assume a certain stereotype about fat people. I recently switched my place of employment and realized that people view obese people as lazy, slow, not productive, and a liability. During one interview, the owner of a company actually asked me if he was sure I could go up and down three flights of stairs that was needed to get to my office. Would he have asked that of a 130 pound woman of my same age? No. It didn't matter how many degrees I obtained, how much work experience I had, and how qualified I was for the position, my physical appearance made me look lazy. I can somewhat understand why employees would think this because unfortunately being obese can make you less productive than a fitter person. This is my office. Um, it's changed a lot over the past few weeks. Uh, it used to be a lot more cluttered and unorganized. I find myself being able to manage my stress and organize a little bit better and cross some things off some to-do lists. Um, just because when I get in, I'm not so tired. I have a little bit more energy. Um, I don't have to drink like five cups of coffee in order to get rolling. I used to drink um, about um, eight cups of coffee a day. And now I'm not drinking any, and I actually have more energy than I did when I was drinking the coffee. I'm drinking a lot more water now, um, thanks to Carly making me sweat my butt off in the gym. Uh, I also used to have a whole bunch of leftovers from my like, catered events in my office, and everything is made with you know heavy cream and butter, and um, my, my favorite was probably the mashed potatoes that would come back from an event. I would eat a whole Tupperware container of those mashed potatoes, and they were just absolutely horrible. Um, now I have a big fruit bowl here that has, um, well today it has some tomatoes. I got some tomatoes from the farmer's market last weekend. It looked good. Um, and some plums, 
some apples, and then I've got a mixture of nuts down at the bottom in case I want something crunchy. Carly says that I'm allowed to eat that whole bowl of fruit every day. I haven't been able to finish the whole bowl yet, but I've come close a few days. Today, Carly is teaching me about juicing. I know nothing about um, drinking fresh juice. The carrots. Carrots give a lot of juice. Nice bright orange color. So you know it's good for you. We like to get all the bright colors we can. Lots of different phytonutrients in every color. Um, the best thing well, for juicing are apples, pears, beets, oranges, carrots. Um, you could throw a little ginger in there, that's good. Um, when you start going outside of those fruits, uh, those other, like bananas, strawberries, that doesn't provide a lot of juice, berries. So I like to stick with stuff that gives me a lot of juice, otherwise I'll just eat it all. Juicing is beneficial for everyone. It's a great way to get loads of nutrients in one shot. I know Tracy will find it to be a great supplement to her plant-based lifestyle. Last through, last through, one more to go. Just like that. Just like that we have the essence of... Six carrots. Essential drinking carrot juice. It's really good. And you always want to try and drink it within 20 minutes after making it. That's how we keep all those antioxidants and phytonutrients alive. Okay. Okay, Tracy, this weight vest weighs 45 pounds, which is approximately how much weight you've lost to date, correct? Yeah. We're gonna walk around in it. Okay. You're gonna tell me what you think. But I just lost it. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna make you appreciate it better. Okay. okay, all right. Talk to me about the weight vest. It's really heavy. I can't believe I used to weigh this. <laughs> Something I've been really excited about is Tracy running. She has not run since middle school. So um, it's going to be a little bit challenging, but I think she's going to be really excited to start running again. Running seems like a simple thing to most people. Running might as well be a foreign word to me. At 350 pounds, it's impossible to run. It's hard enough to walk. Now that I have dropped enough weight, Carly clears me to run, and we start off small. I am not excited about this. I run from one light post to another, and it feels like miles. Every step hurts, from my feet to my forehead. Having my stomach, arms, chest, butt, and legs bounce up and down while keeping my breath seems impossible. Every step seems to knock the wind out of my lungs. I know how hard it is for Tracy to run. I know it hurts her whole being. Someday, she will run a long, long way and love it. Two points away. I'm really enjoying eating lots of fruits and vegetables. It's surprisingly satisfying. Not only do I feel much better, but I really enjoy the taste. My palate has changed to love fruits and vegetables. So 
this week was fun. Uh, something really interesting happened to me. I was working an event, um, a catering event, and I was plating a salad, working in the kitchen, cutting, chopping, doing normal job stuff. And my boss took a picture of me and put it up on Facebook. When I saw the picture, I barely recognized myself and it made me go and look in the mirror. And I'm starting to realize that I might have had like a warped self image or something. Um, when I was really big, I would look in the mirror and I still thought that I was attractive and I still had self confidence. I didn't look in the mirror and see somebody that was ugly. But when I look in the mirror, I still see that same person to the point where when I saw the picture, I definitely didn't recognize who it was or anything like that. So I'm interested in seeing some of the progressions of the photos that have been taken because I, I personally don't see it in the mirror. Um, I definitely saw it in a picture though. I did notice initially that Tracy does have several defense mechanisms. Um, the ones in particular I noticed is that she says things about herself that aren't true to try to build herself up and make people want to listen to her and get to know her. And I spoke with her the other day and told her that, Tracy, you no longer have to do that. You're an extraordinary person doing extraordinary things, and people want to get to know you. Um, you don't have to make these things up about yourself in order to make people want to get to know you and value you. So I think that's a big weight lifted off her shoulders, and I see her getting happier now because she can just be herself. So. so that's five pounds. Let's do it, baby. Yeah, stellar. I like it. Okay, show me how you like it. We're gonna have to work on the dancing. Do it. <laughs> Just get up, get up, and shake it. <laughs> okay, Tracy, show us okay. what we what you've been doing. Um, this is my tailoring job. <laughs> this is what I've been using to keep my clothes on at work. I have to fold. My, the waistband of my clothes in and I just clip it onto myself. So this is what I wear. I and, and why have you been using this as opposed to buying new clothes? Because I bought some new clothes and then they're too big. A little bit later, and clothes is expensive. Well. And it's best that we probably get to your weight before right. we buy some new clothes. So I'm making do. All right. An important part of the vegan lifestyle is having fun with cooking and being creative. I started Vegan Iron Chef Battles with Tracy to get her excited about cooking and to have fun with it. So I'm preparing here a um, vegan pizza. Tracy? Yes? What's going on here? Well, I'm plating my salad. I made a uh, salad dressing that attempted to be a Caesar dressing, but isn't, but it is amazing. And then uh, these here, hold on, let me show you the dressing. Is the dressing, what, how did you describe it? Um, very tasty. Okay, all right, good deal. Unbelievable. It's, a, it's amazing. And then we have some Campari tomatoes that are stuffed with vegan cream cheese. It's all about the food for me. I love food and it's my passion. Food is a large part of my life and I get a lot of satisfaction from making enjoyable memories for others through good meals. My daily work is around food and in the industry. These Iron Chef battles come with a hidden present. It shows me how rewarding it is to not only feed people a meal that they enjoy, but they can be good for them. Being able to show people that a plant-based, whole food diet can taste good while being good for you is the best prize of all. A six pound loss. Again? Uh, 90 pounds. Wow. There we go. Let's go dance yet. <laughs> dance is coming next week, baby. <laughs> I want Tracy to branch out into some new activities. So today we're going to have her first tennis lesson. So we're, we have an exciting day today. Tracy is gonna have her first tennis lesson. Once we got to a certain amount of weight, we're gonna start doing things she's never done before. So today I'm gonna give her her first tennis lesson. Yes. And how many times do you play tennis? Never, 
ever. Maybe some table tennis back in the day, but no. Table tennis, it's a little bit yeah. different. So we're gonna try our hand at this. She's a little bit more mobile now, so I expect to have her on the pro tour within the next <laughs> three months. Okay, this is Reginald Washington, Tracy's first match. She's now taking her lesson, and uh, this is what she drew first round. Reginald, how do you feel about your chances? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I've heard that she's had lessons from Mr. Rase, and uh, the match was a lot of fun. Nobody got hurt, although there were some close calls. But most importantly, Tracy got to do a new fun activity with her new body. All right, we're here waiting. This is a big day. Uh, today's Tracy's 100 pound weigh-in. Three and a half months, 100 pounds unsupersize me it's hard to dispute um, she doesn't know that we're all here waiting for her. she thinks it's just a regular weigh-in um, we've got a group of people in the bathroom waiting that are going to come out and surprise her as soon as the the weigh-in is complete and she loses 100 pounds so I think it'll be a good surprise for her uh, I'm really excited about it we've been working really hard for this so we're going to find out today if she lost 100 pounds in three and a half months Hi! Cheers! <laughs> Here we are, today's a big day. Yeah, that's yeah, a couple ounces. Sure. <laughs> One hundred pounds, baby. You are it. You are congratulations. <laughs> you guys are nice, man. All right, Tracy. <laughs> okay, this is compliments of Marilyn. She wanted to make sure that you were the princess of the day. And you made me a the... promise. One hundred pounds. So I would, I would like the tango. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was so happy for Tracy. I could see in her face how happy she was. And it just made me feel so good. How do you feel, Tracy? I'm excited. Well, I just got my 100 pound tattoo, which matches the 50 pound tattoo, so it's another 50 pounds. Matches exactly. I love it to death. Definitely will remind me of all the weight that I've lost, for sure. How do you feel about your first beach workout, Tracy? I'm excited. Yeah. It reminds me of home. <laughs> Tracy really loves the beach, so I want to show her that you can be active anywhere. I'm excited for her first official beach workout. I grew up on the beach and I love the water. I always think of the beach when I think of vacation. I never think of the beach as a workout, though. It is very challenging to get my mind around the fact that the place where I can relax can also be associated with the place that I work out. As a matter of fact, just the thought of working out as a way to relax is foreign to me. In knowing Carly, I also realized what a privilege it is to be able to step foot in the sand. Not everyone has the same opportunities that everyone else has, and it's important that everyone take full advantage of the ability to move around freely. I see how happy Carly is at the beach, surrounded by people that he loves, and he didn't always have that freedom. 
I know he sees the same in me every time I'm able to do something that I previously could not do. Okay, Tracy, what are we doing here today? Um, we are looking at some clothes that I've cleaned out of my closet. Uh, I, when I hit the 100 pound mark, it became very frustrating to try to dress in the morning because I had a whole bunch of clothes in there that did not fit me. So I've weeded out what doesn't fit me and I'm going to donate it or give it to somebody else or just get it out of here. Um, so just to show you, this was a dress that I wore to work um, probably once a week. As you can see, it's very big. Um, do you want me to put it on? Put it on. I could probably swim in it. It used to be um, a little tight and uh, to the point where I cut the sleeve because the elastic was tight. So, and now you can see I could fit a few people in here with me. So, but then it came to the point where I couldn't wear this to work anymore. <laughs> but this was my size before, so you can see quite a difference. I used to binder clip the side in, <laughs> and I would binder clip it so that I could wear them. Um, but it got to a point where I just could not wear them. Um, this was the skirt that I had, and I had it in black, gray, and khaki. Um, so you can see that, obviously, this is a fitted pencil skirt, um, which would not be a fitted pencil skirt anymore. These were the first to outgrow, for sure. Like, those won't fit me, so. And now I have new clothes. <laughs> getting ready to take on the swamp. If you don't know what the swamp is, if you're not from Gainesville, it's the UF Stadium climbing stairs. This is a new thing for Tracy. She's never been able to do this, so it's going to be an exciting adventure for her to take this on. And uh, how are you feeling? I think they look like really big steps. Stadiums are tough. and something I've really been wanting Tracy to do. Now that she's lost over 100 pounds, I think she's ready. It really gives a sense of accomplishment to reach the top of those steps. A metaphor of what she has overcome so far. Running stadiums for the first time is a feat I wanted to do for a while. I hear many people talk about running stadiums and all these people are fit and in social circles I am not a part of. I still don't feel like I belong in a place where health and fitness is tested, but I want to give it a try. Just to be able to do something different is invigorating, but also scary. I have never felt my legs shake like this before, but I like it. Being on top of the stadiums is the best feeling in the world. Counting each silver step going to the top, and then looking down at my accomplishment while getting ready to do it all again makes me feel like I'm living life. Hey, stadium number one, baby! Job. Hey, you just completed four stadiums. How does your body feel? My legs are shaky, but uh, I feel good. For Tracy's 30th birthday, I got her a bike. Tracy's gonna try her. <laughs> On back by. First day on the bike. Riding like a pro. <laughs> For Tracy's 30th birthday, we're going to Puerto Rico and staying at a vegan resort. She couldn't fly before we started the film, so this is a big milestone. Being able to travel at all is a big deal. Airplane seats at 350 pounds are not comfortable. How does it feel to fit? This time, I'm able to sit comfortably in my seat and travel with ease. This is our vegan uh, resort. Come look at the view. I also have some more adventures in mind for her that will be a surprise. All things she was not able to do before she lost weight. I'm hoping she can do them because some of them are challenging. Horseback riding in Puerto Rico for my 30th birthday was a special treat. 
but also a big challenge for me. I had an accident with a horse when I was younger at a friend's birthday party. I was only 11, but I was too heavy to ride a pony like all the other kids. I had to ride a grown horse, and it scared me away from horses for many years. I never rode a horse again until my 30th birthday. Going to Puerto Rico is a once in a lifetime experience where I hope to do many things I can never have done before. I turned 30 in the halfway mark of my journey and I want to celebrate my new life and thank my trainers for all the hard work and dedication they gave to me. I will always remember the smell of the wild growing jasmine that is in the garden where we eat our breakfast every morning. Breakfast normally has a huge tropical fruit salad and everything tastes so fresh. It is still warm from the sun and you can tell it was picked from the tree that morning. It is then that I realized good food is not only plant-based, but locally grown and seasonal. And that jasmine scent will always remind me of all my new experiences I had in Puerto Rico. Uh, things you want to do once, once you get your new body um, that you can't do now, like um, or any kind of race or a mountain or um I don't think I'm a mountain climber quite yet, but uh don't know if I would ever be a mountain climber. Losing the weight allowed us to do a lot of new things. Number one on the list, mountain climbing baby. Tracy never thought she would climb a mountain, but I knew she would. Tracy has been doing so well that I want to reward her with something she's always wanted, braces. Dr. Don Martin and Dr. Paige Jacobson were kind enough to donate braces to Tracy for our film. I am also self-conscious about my smile. Formula is simple. I work out more, I eat a plant-based diet, I start feeling better, and I smile more. I am so lucky to be given the opportunity to now have an amazing smile. The way I feel about my teeth is the same way many people feel about their size and weight. I am self-conscious, won't smile for big pictures, and I'm embarrassed about their appearance. I remember after just a few weeks of having braces, glancing at myself in the mirror at the gym. I was drenched in sweat, not a stitch of makeup on, but I was smiling and for once thought it was pretty. In honor of Tracy's hard work, I'm going to get a little bit of ink with her, so we're going to be getting ink at the same time. Um, a little bit nervous, but she put a lot of hard work into this, so we both put hard work, so I'm doing it as a reward to myself as well. Just, just down myself with a needle, you know, it's a good reward. So, Tracy, this is your first fashion show, and how are you feeling? I am nervous, but okay. Um, I'm not used to this many people looking at me, but I'm glad that I have lost so much weight and can show it off. Um, I'm proud to be here, especially on behalf of Zed. So, uh, definitely nervous, a little anxious, but I will be okay. This fashion show is something that is very far from my comfort zone. I would not consider myself fashionable, and I am struggling to find out what clothing works well with my new body. Woo! I'm definitely not used to anyone viewing me as someone that is attractive or model worthy. I know that I need to force myself to do this though. It is one of the most challenging things for me to do. Most people would think changing to a vegan diet and starting a workout plan would be the most challenging. This is nothing compared to putting yourself onto a stage to have your physical appearance judged by a crowd of people, especially when you have never been viewed in that light before. It is a challenging experience, but as I'm standing on the stage with the gorgeous Zen Fitness crew, I actually feel proud of myself and what I have done. Feeling proud of my appearance is a foreign concept, but I'm beginning to like it. So how was your doctor's visit today? Good. Uh, I got some really good news back. Um, my first appointment was with the optometrist. I've always worn glasses or contacts since I was real little. 
um, runs in my family. Um, just we all have bad eyesight. And when I went into the doctor, I thought that I was going to need a um, stronger prescription because I hadn't been seeing that well out of my contacts. And um, what it ended up being was that my contacts were too strong, that my eyesight has actually gotten better. Um, the optometrist was really surprised by it. He did a few scans on my eyes. He noticed more blood flow to my eyes. And he asked me if I had changed something in my diet recently. In a few days, it'll be 10 months now as a vegan. Um, and my eyesight has improved to the point where I have a brand new glasses prescription and contact lens prescription. Um, both eyes have corrected themselves at the same time. Um, he said that maybe if one eye had gotten stronger or the other eye didn't, that it was something else. But he said that it was definitely something within my diet to make both of my eyes get stronger at the same time. Okay, so here we are, one year later, and almost 200 pounds down. So we're going back for, in for Kit Tracy's cardiology test. Here we go, <laughs> in this size right here. Oh my god, I'm not sure. <laughs> sure. I think, she, I think uh, uh, she filled this out and she filled it out pretty tight. <laughs> Here. I think you should get that thing tailored to your new <laughs> Made into a dress. Absolutely, you can make it into a dress. Unbelievable. What a success story. All right, Leah. Going into the second stress test, I was a lot less worried. I was way more confident. I knew that I could do this, and I knew I could do it well. Looking at her when she was lying down the second time was amazing. I remembered how far she had come. How'd you do it? Diet and exercise. Diet and exercise. Yep. Uh, diet, anything special with the diet? Plant-based. Plant-based. Vegan diet. Best thing you ever did in your life so far? Yeah. Oh, just yeah. said, by life. far. Yeah. What's the secret? There's no secret. No secret. No secret. Getting yeah. up and doing it diet every day. Yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah. You, you look like a different lady through here and everything. <laughs> she looks awesome. She looks awesome. So how did she do? Yeah, she did amazingly, no kidding. I mean, in the four and a half years I've been here, I've only seen maybe one or two other people that have made it to stage five. So she did, she did amazing. She really did. When someone is 350 pounds, they get familiar with not being noticed in a crowd for any positive reasons. I never have people look at me and admire my appearance. And I'm very comfortable knowing that people do not look at me based on my appearance and actually make a point to make sure I get noticed for other things, like a good work ethic or a loud personality. I still catch myself not recognizing myself in the mirror yet, um, but it'll get there. I was really proud of Tracy for modeling. It's funny because of all the things we did, that was one of the hardest things for her. I could tell she was really out of her comfort zone. But just like everything, she was a warrior. She got in there and she tried her hardest and she did great. And I don't think she realizes how many people she's inspired. Her pictures and her change has made so many people want to lose weight, inspire so many people across the board to be healthy. Shopping now is a lot more fun. There's a lot more variety to it. Uh, there's also a social aspect to it. I'm able to go shopping with my friends before I could never go shopping with my friends because we would clearly have to shop in different stores. They would go into stores in the mall and nothing in that store would fit me. Um, and you can only look at earrings and necklaces for so long. Recently got to shop for bridesmaids dresses with my best friend and her little sister. And that was really fun um, and something that I couldn't have done in the past. 
Um, there's a social aspect to it. There's a lot more variety. I can buy stuff on sale. Um, I can return things. Um, just an endless variety and it's a lot cheaper. Grocery shopping has changed a lot for me now that I'm vegan. Um, when I was not vegan, I would have to go up and down every single aisle in the store. I would have to look at the produce department as well as the meat, dairy, eggs, cheese. Now I can pretty much grocery shop in my produce department and my local farmer's market and get everything that I ever needed um, with occasional visits to the bulk section for beans and whatnot. Um, definitely can run in and run out um, much easier to shop. Dating now is a lot more fun in general. It's a lot easier. I have a lot more options. I can do active things on dates. I can go on bike rides. I can go for a walk in the park. I can go for a run. I can basically go anywhere and do anything with all the options that I have now. Definitely couldn't have done it a year ago, so I didn't finish last. No, you didn't. You're ahead of a lot of people.
waist was 58 inches on our last time we, remember, we measured. So we're going to see where she is now. Down 200 pounds. Okay, and we are at 31 inches. So, as you can see, that is quite an improvement. How does that feel? Feels good. I am vegan. I am vegan. I'm a vegan. I'm a vegan. I am vegan. I am vegan for health reasons and for the planet. For my health. For the planet. I am vegan because it's the healthiest way to be. I'm vegan for my health. I am vegan. I am vegan. I love vegetables and I love fruits. I have a family history of cancer. My grandfather, my father have both battled cancer. Research has shown that there's a strong correlation between a vegan diet and reducing your chances of cancer. For my health, but also because it gives me a lot of energy when I work out. Good for the heart, good for the body. For my health. For my health. Because it's good for my health. I am vegan because I want to get the most out of life. I feel my best. I look my best. Being vegan is not only good for me, but good for the planet. I am vegan. I am vegan because it gave me a new life. It's the easiest way to live life to its fullest. My only regret is that I didn't do it sooner. I'm capable of more now than I ever thought I could do. I feel healthy, strong, and happy. I had no idea how much I was missing out on life. People ask me all the time now if I'm going to continue being vegan. My only response is that there's no reason not to be. My one piece of simple advice for you is to do it now. It's difficult to know that I lived 29 years of my life like that. Nowadays, every aspect of my life is better. I no longer have to hide or lie about who I really am. My daily life is easier and I have so many more opportunities available to me. I was able to move into a new home that's up three flights of stairs. I have a new career that's more rewarding and productive. I've developed relationships with new friends that influence my good habits. I have continued to be vegan and see no reason to stop. I work out on a daily basis and I'm currently training for a marathon. I love spin classes. I was even able to trade in my gas guzzling SUV for a smaller two-seater car. The most unexpected reward from this project was that I have found it to be truly rewarding and motivating to show others how easy it is to be happy and healthy. I write a blog that lists some of my favorite vegan recipes and love to help others get motivated about a healthier eating habit. I never expected to have my photos in magazine articles and my recipes being featured but to know that we could possibly help get one person happier and healthier and feel the way I do, it's the best reward I could ever ask for. I just don't feel like I did anything special. I followed simple lifestyle changes and so could you. That was a year of my life being filmed as I lost 200 pounds. What a great experience to be a part of. I hope that I can motivate you to try something new. Try being vegan, it worked for me. Well guys, Unsupersize Me was a tremendous success. Without question, one of the greatest achievements of my life. I can still be found at Zen Fitness every day, helping people get healthy and teaching them how to enjoy a plant-based lifestyle. I also have launched a new Whole Foods beet juice supplement called Red Ace that helps people with cardio performance and overall health. You have seen our story firsthand now know how quickly a plant-based diet can help you reach your optimum level of health. I hope this film inspires you. The plant-based diet can change your life too.
be behind me. Sometimes what it takes to make a break from the old wall into the new, the real you. You thought it was a world away. You saw the man in the mirror. He looked a little clearer. Rescue from self. But call his help. Unhelp with the west. Woman is medicine. This is the message. Life saving the lesson. Get off your dust. Get it again. See how much you can lose it again. Even big. Make a lifestyle change. But you gotta rewire your brain for the change to remain. And not go back to the same. Lost his game. You don't need to rain. You're a brand new ground with a newfound you. Labor less and drop that extra weight. Labor less, cause you got to help the kids to play. Labor less, don't believe me, ask Trace. Man, she make them dishes taste. Labor less when you're ready to get started. Labor less, just call my man Carl. As a child, Trace was mopping me fun. On the playground, was never showed no love. Learned not 